Hi everyone, I want to share with you my thoughts on the skills and the preparations that you need to become a smart contract engineer in 2020. Please keep in mind that this is definitely not the only way to become a smart contract engineer. This is my opinion on how I would approach this given my skill sets. So first of all, who am I and what kind of skills do I have? I became a full stack developer in 2013 and started learning about blockchain in 2017. And one of the first books that I picked up to learn about blockchain is called Mastering Bitcoin by Andreas Antonopoulos. So if you're getting started with blockchain and you want to understand the fundamentals at a technical detail, then I highly recommend that you read Mastering Bitcoin and it is a free book online. And he also has a YouTube channel called A. Antonop. In 2018, I became a blockchain engineer. And in 2019, I became a smart contract engineer slash freelancer. So that is my background. I've been a software engineer for more than seven years. And I've been doing blockchain related programming for more than two years. So how do you become a smart contract engineer? Well, you're going to need qualifications, and what kind of qualifications are you going to need? Well, looking at numerous job positions for blockchain engineer and smart contract engineers, I think you're going to need a minimum of one year of experience of being a software engineer. And to become a software engineer, in particular a web developer, you're going to need to know some backend programming languages like Python, PHP, Node.js, Go, and so on. You'll also need experience working with databases, so you're going to need to know SQLs and no SQLs. For the front end, you're going to need to know JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And to collaborate with other team members, you're also going to need to know Git. And to get a software engineering job, most interviews will ask you some algorithm questions. So as a web developer, you won't be using algorithms in your day-to-day -day job but you still have to learn it to get the job in the first place. And to get some practice with your algorithms, I think Algo Expert and Leak Code are the two best websites out there to practice your algorithms. So these are the skills that you need to become a software engineer, and I recommend that you have at least one year of experience. You'll need to know some basic blockchain knowledge, and here I listed some key concepts. You'll need to know two consensus algorithms, proof of work and proof of stake. You'll need to be able to explain the difference between the two. And you should also be able to explain how proof of work works. You'll also need to know some cryptography. Now you won't need to understand the underlying math of cryptography, but you'll need to know how to use public key encryption and hash functions. For data structures, in an interview, you might be asked about blockchain and Merkle tree. So be prepared to explain how each of them are built, how they are used, and what kind of problem they solve. And lastly, you should know about the trilemma of blockchain. Decentralization, scalability, and security. The trilemma is that in a blockchain, you could only pick two of these. So you should be able to explain why picking two of these would sacrifice the third. All right, moving on, the last skill that you're going to need is smart contract. And looking at a lot of job positions, a lot of them require one plus year of experience with smart contracts. And at the moment, the smart contract language that will give you the most opportunities, I think, is Solidity. So for Solidity, obviously you need to know the basics. And when you're writing your smart contract in Solidity, you need to be aware of some of the hacks. And this includes denial of service, reentrancy, and integer overflow. Now obviously there are more ways to hack a Solidity smart contract, but I think these three are the basics that you need to be aware of when you're writing your smart contract. You'll need to know how to use open source contracts and at the moment, the most widely used one is OpenZeppelin. So you should be familiar with how to integrate OpenZeppelin contracts into your smart contract. And lastly, you'll need to know how to integrate your smart contract with an ERC20 token. You won't need to know how to write one, but you'll need to know how to use one. 
Once you know how to write a smart contract in Solidity, the next thing that you'll need to know is how to test it. And then deploy it onto your local private blockchain, testnet, and also mainnet. And the most widely used tool to do testing and deployment is Truffle and Waffle. So learn one of the two and you're good to go. And you should also know how to build a UI that interacts with a smart contract. So this means that you'll need to know how to use MetaMask and how to integrate MetaMask into a web app. Now there are several JavaScript frameworks to build a web application, but it looks like React is the most popular framework for cryptocurrency jobs. And lastly, you'll need to know how to use Web3.js. So these are the basic smart contract skills that you need. And once you master these skills, then I highly recommend that you learn some security tools. And the security tools that I recommend that you learn are MythX, Slither, and Echidna. All of these tools are easy to set up, easy to learn, and they provide a lot of security assurance to your smart contract. And what I mean by this is when you write your test, you can only test that your smart contract works in a certain way, but you can't test how it can be broken or how it can be hacked. And this is where these tools come in. These tools will try to break your smart contract. And if it does, it will give you warnings. So knowing how to use these tools is a great skill to have on top of the basic skills that you need to become a smart contract engineer. So that's the qualifications that you need. Minimum one year experience as a software engineer and minimum one year experience writing smart contracts. Now there are job positions that require less, but you don't see them often. So keep in mind that these qualifications are like the average that I saw. All right, moving on. So how do you get qualified? Well, first of all, you should build some maps. And here are some ideas. And this includes voting, multi-sig wallet, decentralized Twitter, decentralized marketplace, or something like an end-to-end -end encrypted decentralized to-do list. What else can you do to get qualified? Well, you can participate in blockchain projects. And this includes conferences, hackathons, meetups. And by doing this, you'll be able to connect with other people who are in the blockchain space. And if you're lucky, you might be able to get a job through the connection. Another thing you could do is contribute to open source projects. And this can be as easy as writing and fixing documents, fixing bugs, and if you're up to the challenge, you could even add new features to a open sourced blockchain project. Another thing that you can try is bug bounties. Even if you can't find any bugs, the benefit of participating in a bug bounties is that you'll be able to see smart contracts that are already deployed in production. Another thing that you can try to get qualified is to get certifications. And I think one of the most credible certification that's out there is Consensus Academy. Personally, I completed the online bootcamp by Consensus Academy. And although it wasn't cheap, I think it is a good certification to have on your resume. And once you build your app or participate in a blockchain project or get certification, you should definitely showcase your work. So this means that you should have a GitHub account and have your resume online. And I personally put my resume on LinkedIn. You can also try starting a YouTube channel and share your knowledge on what you learned about smart contracts. And you can also try blogging it in Medium or Hacker Noon. And lastly, you can also try having your own website where you showcase your work. Once you build your app, you can publish it on GitHub and you can also take the extra mile to deploy your app. And here are some platforms where you can deploy your app. And this includes Heroku, GitHub Pages, Netlify, AWS, and GCP. And out of these, I recommend you use either Netlify or GitHub Pages. They're super easy to use, especially for React apps. Lastly, don't forget that this is a marathon and not a sprint and you probably won't get your next blockchain job in the next week. So don't be discouraged and keep on learning and keep on publishing what you built and keep on sharing what you learned.
The last thing that I'm going to talk about is how do you keep learning. Here I list some resources that I personally use to keep myself updated. To keep myself up to date with the latest Ethereum slash blockchain development, these are the YouTube channels and websites that I use. Now there are many and if I have to choose one, I would choose ETH Hub. They have a YouTube podcast where they talk about the latest Ethereum news. And they also have a website and a weekly email that you can subscribe to where you will get the latest news and the latest development. So I highly recommend that you go to their website and subscribe to their mailing list. To get the latest on web development, here are the websites and the YouTube channels that I subscribe to. And if you want to learn about React or TypeScript, then you should subscribe to Ben Awad. Next, what are some resources that I recommend for a smart contract? The YouTube channels, Eat the Blocks, and Dapp University are great channels to learn about smart contracts, solidity, and how to build smart contract applications. Next, where should you go to look for jobs? These are the websites that I use to look for blockchain engineering jobs. AngelList, Crypto Jobs List, and Cryptocurrency Jobs. For the last two websites, you can subscribe to their mailing list, and they'll send you a weekly email of list of job openings. And lastly, if you want some career advice on software engineering in general, then I recommend that you check out these YouTube channels. I hope that you found this useful, and comment below if you have any feedbacks. I'll post a link to this graph in the descriptions below. Thanks for watching and see you soon.